Hello and welcome to the second part of my review looking at the Mexican clubs in Serer. Um, I'm Chris from Serer on a Budget. Uh, first and foremost, I'd just like to thank everybody for the feedback that I received on the Atlas video. Um, it was quite quite something to get the, the feedback that it did. Um, and I'm really hoping that this video goes over just as well. So this video is looking at uh, Club Santos Laguna. And they were just in the uh, the final um, of the playoffs in uh, the Mexican League. Narrowly lost out to Cruz Azul, um, but they have got quite a lot of players. Um, so I won't hang about. We'll get kind of straight into looking at uh, Club Santos Laguna. Um, clearly a pre uh, pre COVID video here. <laughs> the uh, our picture sorry here and um but yeah we'll have a look we're going to start off with the defenders i'm going to run through the same uh platform as i did when i did the atlas teams so just for anybody who didn't see the atlas videos the way that i've got it set up is i've got the player's name the first number or dmp beside it is for their last five fixtures the next one's the last 15 fixtures the first price is their current price that they're listed at the market now obviously the market's fluid so this is kind of you know it is what it is um, and the final price is the highest price that that card's been on the market um, I have gone back historically looked at the details of where where players prices had been um, and then converted ETH from what it was at that day so there's been quite a lot of research gone into into that side of things so um, the first player we'll look at there is a lot of players at Club Santos Laguna there's also a lot of players that don't have cards um, you'll see at the bottom there that uh, Doria, um, Brazilian defender, he was named as part of the uh, the Liga MX uh, team of the season on a couple of the, the, the sites that I looked at. And he, although he shows up in Serer with a picture and everything, he doesn't have any cards. So their best players aren't necessarily in the defensive uh, positions, but we'll look at them anyway. So the first one is um, Areli Hernandez. Um, he didn't have any uh, games in the last 15, which is obviously reflected in his price being so low. Um, you could pick him up for, um, you know, about £10, £12. The highest he'd actually been on the market was about 30 so I think that was when cards were, were fairly new. Um, he did have two starts early in the season, um, but he has had a number of injuries, looking at his injury history, so... Um, he plays left back. Um, if he's to find form or anything like that, that could help him. However, um, in the previous video, I did mention that uh, Angulo is uh, on loan from Santos, so he'll be returning to them, and there's a good chance that he would probably take the the left back berth. So I'd expect Hernandez really to continue as a, a substitute or a backup. Um, I've then got Ismail uh, Govea. Um, last five uh, were uh, DMPs, but before that he did have a 42 average. Um, he's a right back. He had five appearances in the second part of the season. Um, and he has a year left on his deal, so he could um, obviously get more game time there. Um, set about £30 on the market. The highest price was 50 So as you can see, the defenders here are very very cheap um, even for the ones that are playing um, probably because the better ones are uh, listed the next one uh, Jonathan Diaz um, again another one with uh, two DNPs I'm only sitting at 20 pounds um, with a max price of 40 um, he is contracted till uh, June 20 uh, June 2022 so he's got another year on his deal um, he's another right back and um, he had three starts he is only 22. Um, so obviously, if he was to break out and get a you know a run of games, that twenty pounds would quite easily, uh, quite easily increase. Um, so some of these are low value investments, low value um, you know players just to sit and hold at the club on the hope that they get a game. Um, they wouldn't necessarily be going on your SO five teams, but they're certainly investment you know investment players there that you could probably pick up fairly cheap, um, especially since they're not playing at the moment. You know, there's no there's no games until the the late part of uh, July. The next one, um, Hugo Rodriguez, um, he's a centre back. Now he has, uh, in the first half of the season, he did play in 15 games. In the second part of the season, he did only have three. Um, over that time period though, he did uh, pick up a couple of goals. 
Um, he signed a new deal in March, so he's actually contracted until December 2023. So you can pick him up really cheap on the market just now, you know, he's sitting there at um, about the £14 mark um, and he is somebody that I've stuck out a couple of bids for just to see if I can if I could pick him up. Um, the highest price he'd been sitting at 35 Um I don't think you can really go wrong at players like that, especially when they're playing, you know, and actually getting game time. Um, it's hard to see past, you know, but sticking in, you know, if you are on a really low budget and you're trying to work your way up, if you were to pick one of those cards up at that sort of price, you get two or three games at the start of the season and you could then sell them on for, you know, 40, 50 quid and, you know, more than treble your money on them. So I don't see how you could really go wrong, especially if a guy's getting a game. Um, and speaking of getting game times, um, we have Emilio uh, Orangia. Uh, last five games, 45. Last uh, 15 average of 41. Um, again, you can pick him up quite cheap. He's sitting about £45 on the market. The highest he'd been was 55 Now, on the uh, transfermarket.co.uk, he was actually listed as a right winger, but with the, the right back being um, the secondary role. Um, having looked on sofa score and kind of gone back through the, the last few games, it is right back that he's been coming up as and been playing as. So it looks more like Serrera have got it right and transfer market maybe have it wrong or he's just maybe a versatile player. Um, he has had a good number of games. He's contracted um, through December. Um, so a lot of the contracts seem to go, you know, but sometimes it's between the two parts of the season, the aperture and the, the closure. So it could well be that, you know, the, uh, he could, you know, any of these players, this is another thing to bear in mind, with this team being owned uh, by the same group that own Atlas, they do loan a lot of the players to Atlas. They do send a lot of players on uh, actual transfers to Atlas. So um, any of these ones with, D with DNPs that have maybe had some game time, they, they could well be worth picking up just on the basis that they may well get actually transferred to Atlas, be it on loan or be it uh, as a permanent deal. And that could make you know a, a big difference because they're likely to get more game time at Atlas. So we're going to look at midfielders now. They actually have uh, a huge list of midfielders in the game. Um, I think it's about 15 players they actually have um, in Serrea as midfielders. So a lot of them are DNPs. So I've bundled the ones that I've played together and I've bundled the ones that are DNPs together. And I'll kind of talk through the, the scoring ones. The DNP ones I'll, I'll, I will kind of uh, talk through as well. Um, but not quite as detailed. Um, so, the first set of midfielders here, um, these are all guys that have, that have played uh, quite, a, quite a few games. So, the first one is Jesus uh, Izihara. Now, he spent the first half of the season at Atlas. Uh, he signed to uh, Santos Laguna in January. Now, I've actually just picked, uh, picked him up purely on the basis of, you know, he played 15 games in the first half of the season for Atlas and then he played 11 more um, at Santos Laguna. He was primarily a substitute, which is, you know, reflected in his, his averages of 29 in, uh, for the last five and 32 for the last 15. But 15 quid for a guy that is getting plenty of game time. Um, now... We all know that injuries can happen in the current climate, you know, you can have people disappearing for a couple of weeks in isolation um, and that, that leaves the door open for guys that are, you know, that are consistent or um, are more than capable of stepping in and doing a job. So for, for that sort of a price, um, I couldn't I couldn't kind of not, not do it, um, especially when I was sitting with a couple of DNP um, J League players and I was able to try, I was able to trade that through with Pavel. Um, now, the second one here is uh, Ronaldo Prieto. Um, he's only 24. Um, he played in 12 um, games in the second part of the season and also the, the five playoff and five of the playoff games. Um, solid, you know, if unspectacular scores, you know, an average of 39 for the last five, 42 for the last 15. Said about the £50 mark, the highest he'd been was 60 Um He does seem to be one of those midfielders that is just kind of hitting around that 40 mark. Um, you know, not really kind of going beyond that. Um, he is out of contract um, at the end of this month. So it's a matter of, you know, where will he get picked up? Will he stay with Santos Laguna? 
Um, for 50 quid, you could probably pick up a couple of the other lads um, and kind of just keep an eye on him and see what happens with his deal. Um, obviously, if I see anything, I would try and keep, keep things posted. The next one I've got here is Jesus Orejo. Um, again, um, he is, uh, I think I've actually mistyped that, I believe it's Osejo. It is Osejo, it's O-C-E-J-O, not O-R. Um, I don't know why I've done that, but anyway, uh, that's what I get for not proofreading it properly. So he is a, a former under-22 international. Um, now on, uh, again on transfermarket.co.uk, he says he's a centre forward. Um, judging by sofa score, um, it looks more like an attack, you know, an attacking midfielder or as a, just a central midfielder. He did play in 15 of 18 games um, and has five playoff uh, appearances as well. Uh, predominantly substitutes. Again, you can always see that within the, you know, if you see a guy that's got, you know, plenty of scores against them, but they're all really low, it's generally because they're a substitute. So the last five, 22, the last 15, 31, you can pick them up for about 30 quid. Um, again, as I say, get a run of games could he improve could he get more uh you know could he maybe even get a move to atlas it's you know one of those things that you could uh, you could certainly speculate on um 30 quid max price has been is about 60 so you know definitely one that you could have a you could have a look at the next one alan cervantes he's the one that i've put the card picture beside here he is 23 he is part of the under 23 international team um, he's one of the better players at the club um, in that under-23 bracket. He's been a regular all season. Now the player that he kind of, you know, when I looked at his stats and looked at um, what he's, you know, what he's scoring, his prices, it's very, very similar to Jeremy Marquez of Atlas. Um, very consistent, as you can see, 54 and 54 for his averages. Um, his price reflects that 160 quid. The highest it had been was 180. Now, being under 23 and, you know, being a very consistent player, that, that price is probably quite fair. Um, he will miss the early part of the season, though, because he is part of the under 23 squad that will be going to the Olympics. I believe he played in a fixture, um, I want to say it was last night. Um, so there's every likelihood that he would miss the first few games, which might open the open the door to some of the you know the other players that I've mentioned or will mention as a DNB that may come in and actually pick up some game time. So if the if the Olympics get added to the scoring, which I don't think they will, but if they do, could be a great pickup for that. Um, he is contracted right the way through till December of next year, so certainly one that you know if you've got the money to invest. Um, you could you could certainly do worse uh, than, than pick him up. The next one I've got listed is Felix Torres. Now in Surreir, he is listed as a midfielder. He's been playing as a centre back. He's listed as a centre back in uh, again on the transfer market site, and uh, that's where he's played. If you look at Sofa Score and go back over the games, that's exactly where he's played. He's an Ecuador international, so he could uh, get you know some game time over the summer in the Copa America. And he was a regular throughout the season, especially in the, uh, the the second part of the season. He's contracted through to 2023, uh, uh, June 2023. Um, he was actually an unused substitute um, in Ecuador's international the other night, which I believe was against Brazil. Um, so yeah, you, you know, let's see his averages: 49 for the last five and 42 overall uh, for the last 15. His price is 85 pounds. I think that's probably probably fair, um, especially playing for a team like um, Santos Laguna. You know, he's one of the higher players, and my alarm has just decided to go off in the middle of the video. Apologies for that. And uh, yeah, so he is one that you know the max price has only been ninety, so he's kind of sitting around his peak sort of price where he's been. But I would definitely, um, you know, again, if I was in the market at that sort of a price. You could, again, it's one you could definitely do worse than. Next one is Fernando Goriadon. He is, I think he is actually the most expensive player um, at uh, Santos Laguna. He is uh, sitting in the market just now for about £350. And again, that seems quite steep. But if you look at his last 15, average of 59, um, he is their key player. He's a Uruguayan international. 
um, play centre mid, um, extremely solid scores, um, which his price does reflect that. Now, I think that's a bit high, um, but having said that, the highest it's actually been on the market was 500. So you're looking at a player that could definitely, you know, he's, he's certainly a, a, a very strong, very key player for Santos Laguna. He's contracted through to June 23. He's well out right with my price range. Um, however, if you have the budget for it, um, he will play regularly. He will get in the national games as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you can see from 59 for average over 15 games, that's that is very good. Um, the 43 probably, you know, doesn't look as great, but yeah, 59 over the last 15, definitely, you know, a, a quality rate and a quality player. And the next one, again, another international, uh, Diego Valdez. Uh, last five average of 51, last 15 of 50. Um, he's set at his peak price at the moment and that he's been was about £140. Um, he plays as an attacking midfielder. Um, he missed part of the second half of the season, but he did play all the playoffs. He had seven games in the playoffs, two goals and an assist. So he is somebody that could definitely score well. Um, he is a Chilean international. He's contracted through till December 2022, so you don't really have any worries on that front of you know uh, of him running out of contract and then disappearing sort of thing. Um, a solid pickup at that sort of a price. Um, if I was looking in that price bracket, I'd maybe look more towards uh, Cervantes purely on the you know you get a bit more utility out of the under 23 uh, side of things. But, you know, as I said, Diego Valdez is a Chilean international. Again, that could be a Copa America thing, um, you know, where it would certainly work. So the that's the, the, the midfielders who have played games. The next batch of uh, midfielders are all ones that have been shown as uh, DNP for the last, uh, certainly for the last five. A couple of them have maybe had a game or two in the last 15, but I've bundled them all together just for space constraints, really. Um, the first one, Jose Avila, um, attacking midfielder. He's a former under-21 international. He is only 23. Um, he played 17 games in the lower tier out on loan last season. Um, he did get three goals and an assist in that, so he, he does have uh, you know, potential. Um, I've put on my notes here, Atlas question mark, because you know, is that somebody that could you know, uh, for a bit more experience that they actually loan him to somebody in the same division so that he's getting a bit more experience in a higher league as opposed to, you know, dropping down the leagues again. Um, he is sitting on the market um, for about 20 quid. Um, I've actually got a couple of bids out on him <laughs> to see if I could pick him up. The highest he's been was 25, purely because if you look on, you know, Serie Data or if you look on, you know, anything like that, you'll just see DNPs and you won't see any scores. But if you dig a little bit deeper on some of these DNPs, you will find some, you know, some uh, kind of diamonds in the rough, if you want to call them that. The next one is uh, Jair uh, Gonzalez. Um, again, zero, zero, no, no games, just DNP showing. Um, he was sitting about 30 quid on the market. Um, he's 19. He uh, played most of the season with the under 20 squad. Um, left winger, he made four appearances over the course of the season and they were all substitutes. So, um, could he break through? He certainly could. Um, would he, again, could it be somebody that looks at maybe uh, alone uh, somewhere? Um, could be one for the long run. Um, I would probably keep an eye on him though. I wouldn't necessarily dive in with both feet. Edgar, uh, Ga I want to say it's games, but it's obviously not. It'll be Games probably. <laughs> uh, he had a few limited appearances. Uh, he's contracted till June um, of next year, and he's a centre mid. He is 20 years old, and he's only sitting about 18 uh, pounds on the market. The highest price he'd been was 35. Um, he has had a, a you know, say he has had a couple of games there. He did have an average for the last 15 of 38, but that's only from a couple of games, so it's hard to kind of judge on that. We then have uh, David Andrade. Uh, he's out of contract at the end of this month. He's a left back. He was a starter, um, but he kind of, for whatever reason, fell out of favour. I don't know if it was an injury. I, I couldn't find an awful lot of detail on that. Um, although he's listed as a midfielder, he was the, he was playing as the left back. Um, but again, you've got you know Angulo hanging over that left back spot. So. Um, does he come back to Laguna and start there? Do they send him back to Atlas? It's hard to say. Um, especially with the setup, it's a 
you know, two teams being owned by the same group in the same division. I mean, it certainly wouldn't happen in, in a lot of the, a lot of the Euro, you know, especially the, the British leagues, um, uh, and probably most of the Europeans, to be fair. Uh, Jordan Carrillo, next one here, um, was a DNP in last five and 15 as well. Uh, £35 sitting on the market at the moment, um, £50 potential price. So he is one that um, he could, you know, uh, get a little bit of game time. He had a couple of substitute appearances. He was um, an under-20 international as well, and he's contracted till June next year. So could, he could certainly see somebody that could break through a little bit. Now, the next two are both ones that are coming back from a uh, quite serious injury. So the first one I'm going to mention is Ulysses uh, uh, Rivas. He had a knee injury in October, which has kept him out for the rest of the season, basically. Um, before that, he was a regular. He was playing in, uh, he played in all of the, the early part of the season. He is sitting on the market at £30, um, potential price of 50 He's a DMP from the last 15, obviously, because he has been out since October. So um, 30 quid for a guy that was an ever-present, you know, I, you never know with knee injuries, it, he could come back, you know, especially in you know, in modern football, he could come back no problem. But sometimes you do get guys that linger with it or reoccur. Um, so, but for 30 quid, it could be worth the, the investment, to be fair. The next one, Brian Lozano, he is a, uh, a Uruguayan international as well. He's contracted to June 23, uh, 2023. He is somebody that is a, a key player. He broke his leg and he's been out for a year. Now, he's uh, he is due back into training. Uh, it does seem like it was quite a severe injury. Um, but sometimes they say, you know, fractures are better than, you know, like a knee ligament injury because they will heal and they will heal stronger a lot of the time. Um, his price on the market is still sitting around the £200 mark and that is as high as he's been, but he's been pretty consistent about that price. So he, people are obviously quite high on him um, and when he comes back he will be a starter. Um, it's a hell of a lot of money to put in for a guy that hasn't played for a year, um, but you know that he will be one that will probably come back. He does wear the number 15 shirt, which is a personal favourite of mine. Um, but for 200 quid, I would probably look at um, some of the other other lads. But he could come back and be another one like uh, Gary Aaron, whose price rockets. I mean, Gary Aaron's sitting at about 500 quid as the highest, you know, and he's sitting at 350 on the market just now. So Lozano is in that same sort of bracket. It's just, it's just whether you want to take a £200 uh, gamble on him or not. Coming on to the forwards, they only have three, so we're coming towards the end of things here. Um, I've kind of gone through quite a, you know, the time's kind of flying by here, so I'll try and keep this uh, on point. Um, first one, Ignacio uh, Geraldino. Uh, last five, 24, last 15 of 26. Um, current price on the market is only about 20 quid, and his potential price, or the highest price he'd been on the market was 55. He did play, for a, for, for a guy that's only 20 quid, he did play um, in 32 of the fixtures uh, this season, mostly from the bench. He did get a, he only had one goal for a centre forward, which is up there with some of the players that I've seen play for my club. Uh, but he um, very much the backup. He was previously at Atlas, can't imagine that. Um, he has had four Chilean caps as well, and he is only 25, so... For 20 quid for a guy that is getting plenty of game time, you know, could he be one that switches to Atlas? Could he get a run of fixtures, especially with some of the younger lads that we're looking at uh, coming up here? Um, he, you know, it's it's any of these guests, but he, uh, 32 fixtures and only 20 quid doesn't seem like a, a bad investment to just have sitting there. The next one, um, uh, these two youngsters... Man, it's hard to get a grasp on the prices and whether they're fair, whether they're not fair. Are they, you know, are they overhyped? What's the situation? So, first one, Santiago Munoz. Last five appearances, only a 26 average. The last 15 was 39. Well, probably the last five have dragged that down a wee bit. Now, price on the market, 330 quid. Wow, okay. So, he is, um, his card says 17, he's just turned 18. Um, he had 13 appearances in the second half of the season. He did break through. He had three goals and three assists, so he's already up on goals on uh, Geraldino. 
Um, but 330 quid. Um, could he live up to his hype and, you know, continue on with uh, breaking through? Obviously he could. Um, the kid's obviously got talent. Um, you know, you don't get into a you know, top flight team that's going to the finals and, um, you know, score a few goals, get some assists on the board at that sort of an age without, you know, having talent. I think 330 quid's a bit high. Um, if he was maybe half that, um, I'd be saying, yeah, you know, probably worth it. However, he could go on, he could, you know, start all the games, be in that under-23 bracket, could, you know, work out for the under-23 uh, teams that you could put in, or he could go straight into your global team, you know. Um, but that's a big risk. That's a big risk for 330 quid. Um, I've put question marks against the potential prices here for him and Aguirre. Uh, Aguirre um, just because I don't know what their potential is, because this is the highest they've been. And it's hard to really say. Um... So, speaking of Eduardo Aguirre, let's have a quick look at him. Last five of 44, uh, last 15 of 43. Now, he did have a fair bit of hype, um, especially throughout the playoffs there. Um, he was kind of one of their postseason heroes. In the playoffs, he had seven appearances from the seven games, five goals. Um, he had 17 appearances in total during the whole season which was only about 48% of the minutes available that he actually played. However, with that postseason, I mean, man, that's that's quite a performance to put up in seven games when the, you know, when the, the chips are down and you're you're really looking for, uh, you know, your guys to, to score goals to try and get you through to, towards the finals. Um, at 160 quid, I'm going to go the opposite way from Munoz and say that's quite cheap, I think. Um, now, the hype has driven that price up, um, but you're looking at uh, an under-23 international, you're looking at somebody that has proven in seven games five goals when, you know, when these teams needed it. I think there is a, a risk, you know, they could sign, a, you know, a striker over the summer and they start and then Aguirre is back to being a substitute or anything. But at 160 quid, I actually think that he is a great deal. Um, I don't have that sort of spare funds at the moment until uh, one of my one of my players breaks out and prices drive up again. But I, if if I was to take a gamble on any of the forwards that I've mentioned in the previous video and I'm going to mention in the next video, I would probably take a gamble on Aguirre. Um, I know some there was somebody on Twitter had asked. Um, I think it was Mike was asking um, what I thought of him and yeah I think he's out of the two between him and Munoz I would be a great all day and at that sort of a price I think he could do well I think he I could even see you doubling your money on that um, but it's you know I've put a question mark there because I don't know um, but out of the forwards that I've mentioned in any of the videos so far he would definitely be the one that I would look at Goalkeepers, I'm just going to touch on this briefly because I had mentioned in the previous video about um, Atlas uh, goalkeeper moving on. Um, so, you know, does, does that uh, open up scope for, uh, for Santos Laguna to send somebody over or do they go with their own backup? Um, the goalkeeper here at Santos Laguna, Carlos uh, Acevedo, um, he is an ever present. He played 42 games over the course of the season, 24 years old. His price is almost £1,000, um, but he's one of the best keepers um, in, in the league. Last five average of 48, last 15 of 50. Um, his backup, uh, Gibran Lajud, he could, you know, he's, he's an able backup, but, you know, he hasn't got any data to prove anything, you know, or to say whether he would be somebody worth picking up. Um, but when... You know, when the main keeper is never present and, uh, you know, leading them to the championship games, hard to argue that um, he deserves it. His price, I mean, starting goalkeeper prices scare me, <laughs> but he's probably one of the more um, more solid that you could uh, rely on playing every week. As you can see, 42 games out of 42. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a sketchy one. I probably think looking at the Atlas goalkeeper situation that, uh, Jose Hernandez is probably their uh, their main guy. I'd probably be looking to maybe pick him up. Um, so yeah, that's look that's uh, Santos Laguna. I have gone long again. Uh, it wasn't as long as I was intending. 
Um, the next team up is Kiritaro. Um, I am hopefully going to get this video done um, for Monday night um, due to working the rest of Sunday and uh, working Monday it might not so it may be Tuesday night but I will keep you posted on Twitter as to when that comes up um, if you're just watching on YouTube and you're watching in a few days time from when the video has actually been released it'll be out it'll be sitting there in the the video library thank you to everyone that subscribed on YouTube um, and to the Twitter page um, once I've finished this little series I'm interested in seeing if people have enjoyed looking at a club review as opposed to you know, scattered players um, from different places and budgets and things like that. So, interested to see if people are, in, you know, looking for it maybe to carry on something similar. Um, if you haven't signed up to Serer and you're interested, um, if you use the link that I've got on the screen there, serer.com forward slash r forward slash Serer on a budget, you will get a free player when you've signed five players from the new Simons market. Um, and you can also follow me on Twitter at Serer on a budget. Worth having a little, uh, you know, uh, if, if you want to give me any feedback, giving it on there, um, send it as a DM, you know, what, wherever you want to send it to, um, and I'll, I'll definitely take any feedback on board, positive, negative, so long as it's constructive, I don't mind negative feedback if you don't like something, um, that's everybody's, you know, everybody's own business, so if there's, uh, yeah, if there's any questions or any ideas, please get in touch, thank you so, so much for uh, all the feedback, it's really, really appreciated. And I will speak to you again soon with our next video.